to go in and beat a player like Tex, all of a sudden your name is up in lights across the community. I think the fact that Jazz has already gone up against Tex, he's already been able to secure goals against him, will give him plenty of confidence going into this. It's going to be a great match. Is Tex going to carry on his fine form from yesterday? Is he going to remain undefeated? Is he going to reach his ninth semi-final in a row? Or is there going to be that Cinderella story for Jazz? And that is a phenomenal statistic. As you can see, we're kicked off now in our first leg here. Tex playing in the Liverpool kit, but on the attack early on here, it's Jazz with R9, plays the ball into the middle, and the first opportunity of the game falls to Jazz, but he can't take it. The goalkeeper movement there from Tex saves his bacon early on. And it was uh, in the first time these guys played against each other in Swiss, it was actually Jazz who went 2 0 up. It was Tex who came back from behind like we saw several times yesterday in fact so Jazz will know that he can get that lead whereas Tex will be trying to hold off and try and secure a couple of early goals for himself because that's really when he runs rampant when Tex gets a goal or two ahead he can absolutely crush his opponent well here's CR7 and there's a run from Hullet again Jazz is in and Jazz finishes it look at the reaction from him as well that's what he wanted to start the day off and Jazz just has so much potential going forward. He is explosive. He knows exactly where he wants to be putting that ball. And if you do give him opportunities, he's going to take them. And once again, he finds himself ahead against Tex in the early stages of this tie. Big, big moment in this game, in my opinion. That new prime moment. Rude Hulle getting on the score sheet. That five-star weak foot, meaning that left-footed shot. Nestled in that top corner and... Tex has got to be a little bit shell-shocked because the first two big opportunities of this game have gone to his opponent. So we see the first strike coming in from Tex here, but what a start to the day here, Dan. Lots of action, lots of chances. And it's Jazz who has the lead. And it's a huge tournament for Jazz as well. I mean, you said he was relatively unknown. Before he qualified for Atlanta, he didn't have much Global Series ranking points. He, he boosted his way up to about 71st after Atlanta. That's where he resides at the moment. After this tournament, and he's qualified for the LQE in London later this month as well, he's really got a good shot at playoffs. So if he can get a result here, it would be huge. Well, here is Tex, and he's found his way into the box. Oh, but the finish lets him down. I think the defender might have just put a little bit of pressure on Mbappe there as he almost looks certain to score. But now Jazz going straight up the other end now. And look at all the players that are streaming forward for him as well. He's showing no fear whatsoever. However, that ball in behind. Won't reach the player because he was caught offside there. And just for a second, we can catch our breath. This has been end-to-end -end stuff. So one thing that Tex is good at doing is reading his opponent. He notices how they're trying to attack, the approach that they're going to be going for the rest of the game. And he might have noticed it early from Jazz. He's playing those through balls. He's trying to hit that L1 button, that LB button, find the through ball with R9 or whoever. CR7 might be making the run as well. If Tex can spot those early and play that offside trap, he's going to be in a good position. Well, here's Hullet and here's Sira 7. And goalkeeper movement from this time comes from Jazz to make the save. Goalkeeper movement still is so, so important. Less important, I guess, since the, uh, the latest patches have turned away the finesse from outside the box. But you never know with some of these shots. They can just nestle their way in if you don't move the keeper to the right side of the goal. Corner then. For Tex, 1-0 down after 20 minutes here, but it has had chances to equalise. Ball going to be played short here. We saw the El Tornado, and there it is again towards the back post, and the oh. man gets up! But he hits the crossbar, and it is just going to be a goal kick. We saw it quite a few times from Tex yesterday. Lots of different routines from those set pieces, but the El Tornado and that cross towards the back post Seems to be the one that he's favoring at the moment. Yeah, that, that's, that's his go-to. He switches to R9 or whoever to allow Neymar to run to that front post so he can go for the El Tornado. But sometimes he tries to be predictable and he can be punished for that. Uh, so he does just try and stay a little bit unpredictable in those scenarios. And he's like, OK, well, if I switch this up next time, maybe my opponent's not going to be able to read it. And that's what makes Tex so dangerous going forward. But despite the early start for Tex and allowing Jazz to get those early shots away it's been all Tex in the last few stages of this game this is where Tex is normally so dangerous when he gets the ball into these fullback areas Hull it now around the corner Mbappe big chance here for Tex De Gea makes the save Maldini gets the clearance still pressure on here from Tex but the difference so far between the Tex we saw yesterday and the Tex we're seeing this morning very early on in this game of course is just not being able to find that final finish Dan yeah and I don't know whether that's just uh, kind of waking up he's not hitting the green time Daz consistently as he usually does but he's still got plenty of time to work with still in the first leg here and of course 
Still has another 90 minutes in a second leg as well. So I don't think he'll be too concerned. But one thing that makes this tie very exciting is both of these players have done phenomenally at coming up, coming from behind in this tournament. It's not just Tex that we've seen come back from two or three goals down. We saw Jazz do it as well. Uh, in his round of 16, he was 3-0 down after the first leg. And then he went 7-3 in his second leg to come back. And that takes incredible determination to be able to do so. Well, here's Neymar on the edge of the box. And Bappe strikes it this time. I think it might have taken a deflection there. Off of the defender, and Tex is starting to grow into this one now. As you say, ever since that goal has dominated the flow of the play, and all the chances have really fallen to him. However, hasn't been able to find one yet. Can he create something here from the set piece? Into CR7. One man who can beat him in the air. If it isn't your own version of Cristiano Ronaldo, he's probably Virgil van Dijk, and he was there to deny the Juventus man, now Pele brings the ball away here for Jazz, and Jazz with a little bit of time just to have a little bit of respite, to be honest with you, because he's been under the cost since, since that goal down. Yeah, and Tex is trying to press up the pitch now. He's trying to win the ball a little bit higher up to try and be able to take Jazz. Maybe on a quick early counter-attack, catch some of those defenders off guard, catch them out of position. Here CR7 trying to catch someone out of position, and the shot taken early there is going to result in a corner here. For Jazz whipped into that near post and Vieira gets up to get it away. And in these kind of games where you are a goal behind and you feel like you could have grabbed a goal or two, you're always going to be a little bit more uh, hasty in your attack. You're going to be trying to push a little bit quicker if you're the normal player. Whereas Tex has been more than happy to play slow possession-based football. He's been building up, he's been waiting for the right opportunity. So he's still doing everything right at the moment. And you feel like a chance is going to be coming. Well, here might be this is chance. This is where he's so dangerous. R9 now. Finds Vieira. Hold it now, just looking to tease the defence. And Bappe now onto that right foot, goes across goal. De Gea makes that look more difficult than maybe it was. Wasn't timed perfectly, but he does make the save. Another corner to Tex now. Whipped in towards the box. There's Vieira there, and Tex equalises from the corner. And it's Patrick Vieira who gets up, wins the header. And now it's tied up a 1-0. And it's just that little seed of doubt that he planted early on with that Neymar El Tornado. He was saying, well, I have that option of just passing it short, which meant that Jazz was moving players in the box. And he was trying to say, all right, I'm going to block the El Tornado. And Tex is just going for something different from every corner, trying to stay unpredictable. He's got an equaliser now. And this game has exploded, as it should do. Because both of these players know how to put the ball in the back of the net. So from the restart then, the it's going to be Jazz now looking for an opportunity. Hullet now the goal scorer for him. That gave him the lead, Hullet. Dispossessed though by Hullet. It was actually Rafael Varane in all of the uh, the excitement there who was credited with the own goal. Not so sure about that. Pretty sure that header was on target there from Vieira, but... Might have just caught a whisker. Just caught a little bit of the moustache of Varane. Just, and just, just enough for the, <laughs> the game to decide that was his. <laughs> now here's Neymar then for Tex. I think he'll feel a lot more confident having got back on equal terms, having missed a few chances. There is the half-time whistle, Dan. And you can see there from the statistics, as far as chances created, Tex has been on top. But Jazz, he's got to be full of belief after that first half. And it is really interesting that Tex is quite a slow starter in this tournament. I mean, there's been several times where he's gone behind or he's conceded those first two goals. It's almost like he needs to concede a goal to just switch into that extra gear of going, OK, I'll play some FIFA. I'll actually come to you. You, knew, you know how to play FIFA as well. And uh, that is a, a scary factor. Oh, my word. It's time to wake up for Tex because Jazz has just smashed it in from around 30 yards with CR7. Just as we were kind of lulling our way in from the restart at halftime. Jazz takes the game by the scruff of the neck and CR7 buries one from distance. Holy moly. Yep, that was an absolute screamer. And like you said, that will certainly, if anything's going to switch Tex into overdrive, it's probably going to be a goal like that from Jazz. Just as Tex would have been thinking, all right, I've rescued this now in the first half. I can start to play in my own game. He's still going to have to come from behind here in the second half. Here's Pele then. Hullet making the run. Good tackle, though, by Tex's rude Hullet there. We have seen both of those prime icon moments. Foot items having influences on the game. Vieira scoring at one end, Hullet at the other. Before CR7 has given Jazz the lead. And now it's CR7 for Tex on the edge of the box. Neymar now. Danger here for Jazz. Tex is looking dangerous. The drag back to the oh. shot just wide of the post from Neymar. 
And they're the margins we're playing with here in the quarterfinal. Yeah, it's been two or three of those Vortex that probably could have gone into the back of the net, but they've just sailed wide. Or he's timed it yellow and it's just found the keeper's hands. And that's the thing, he could be four goals to the good if he'd been able to find those chances. And that's what's pretty terrifying if you're going up against someone like Tex. You know that at any moment he can find those chances. But Jazz will be more than happy with how he's approached this game. Doesn't look scared, doesn't look intimidated by the fact he's going up against the best player in the world. And he could make a little bit of history here. This would be the first time Tex wouldn't qualify for a semi-final ever in FIFA 19. As you say, one statistic that is absolutely incredible, especially this deep into the season, to have that level of consistency. But now he's being tested by a new challenger. In Jazz, you can see that little run there from Neymar. He did find a little bit of space. CR7 now, powering his way towards goal. Finds Mbappe now, hill to hill from Tex. Almost oh. found the ball to CR7, who was just waiting to finish that chance. But here he comes once more, Tex. Can't get past Maldini, though. Well defended there by Jazz on numerous occasions, Dan. And if Jazz can hit one of these counter-attacks and catch uh, Tex off guard here, he could be in a really good position going into this second leg. But it's all Tex flowing forward. And you can see Jazz is just putting everything behind the ball, trying to frustrate Tex. Well, you've got to be here. careful. R9's on the ball. Oh, Van Dijk makes a good tackle, but R9 making a nuisance of himself there. But again, yesterday we were talking about how clinical Tex is, but he's... He's not been able to find those finishes, Dan. I don't know what's quite going wrong for him. But if he keeps getting presented with the chances, if Jazz does just sit back and allow Tex to come forward and allow him to have four or five shots left in this game, he's going to convert one of them eventually. So Jazz needs to do something special from one of these counter-attacks to really stop that next possibility of a goal from uh, Tex being an important one. Well, Jazz with possession, that's going to calm the nerves a little bit here. Can't concede if you've got the ball at your feet. Now he's found Pele with a little bit of space. Didn't time that finish at all. And Ferdinand will bring the ball away now for Tex. Around 20 minutes left in this first leg. One goal, the difference between the two teams. As Marcelo now advances, and again, Tex looking for that ball down the line, looking to get in behind the fullbacks. There's the fake shots around the corner. Neymar now. What's Tex got up his sleeve in these situations? He's found Ronaldo. No, he hasn't. Maldini just gets there first. But you can see what Tex is trying to do. He always goes for those fake shots on the wing because he's able to just step away from that man with a couple of touches. And then he's looking for a couple of passes into the box. He doesn't have to always use skill moves. He's not always going to go down the same route. And that's what makes him difficult to defend against. Here's Hullet with the chance to strike it. Oh, it's the crossbar again for Tex. Twice he's hit the crossbar. And it looks like Lady Lucky's not shining on him in this first leg at the moment. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you've had beans on toast or what for breakfast. If, uh, if the FIFA gods aren't shining on you when you're taking those shots, sometimes it's not always going to go your way. And Tex is certainly probably feeling that way at the moment. He's had several strikes on goal, which on another day could have been nestling into the back of the net. But it's going to give him confidence at least going forward. He's still creating these chances. Here's Mbappe again. And there, those fake shots again. Get his body between his man and the defender, CR7, into the box. Oh, and it's classic text. The drag back, the finish. And now it's 2-2. But this is what's scary. When you frustrate Tex and when he keeps up in these chances, he almost just turns into a different player where he's like, well, I'm just going to have to pull out all of the stops here. And that is such a tidy finish in the box there from Cristiano Ronaldo. And Tex evens up once again. But the scary thing, I guess, on the other side is that even when Jazz does find himself in these situations, he seems to just pull out a goal out of nowhere. And this is where he's been dangerous, Dan, from these restarts. Tex has got to focus up here and make sure he defends. And that's going to certainly be a sigh of relief there as he gets possession back from the restart. And now Ramos is coming forward here. Now Tex, is he happy with the two-all draw? Is he going to look for another big opportunity towards the end of the game? He might get one here from this free kick. And set pieces is something that Tex... I've always thought has come up with special ideas, but he's just going to go for a little simple pass this time. R9 then to Hullet. He's been behind twice in this game, Tex. Managed to pull it back for two, to 2-2. Two, two. Can he take the lead in the last few moments of this game? Vieira on the edge of the box. Neymar strikes it and Neymar scores. And Tex takes the lead. He's been behind twice, but you just cannot keep Tex down. And you have to wonder, with all the competitors also watching this game, probably wanting Tex to lose because you don't want to go up against him. You don't want to face him when he's at his best. 
I mean, even in this game where he's looked lacklustre at times, he's still managed to pull out the stops. He's still managed to find the goals when he needs them. And it doesn't matter if he goes down, he always finds a way back. And now Jazz, for the first time, is going to have to come from behind. Look at those shots on target. Look at those attempts on goal. And you have to say, with those statistics, you have to kind of say Tex maybe deserves the lead in this game so far. However, we have seen how dangerous that Jazz can be when he does get those opportunities. Not been a lot of strikes on goal, but when they have, he's found the finishes. Yeah, so Tex needs to be wary here, Dan. He's been timing him green. He's been hitting his shots well. He knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. And Tex will be well aware of that. And those are the shots that he's going to be trying to pull off. Just trying to catch the keeper off guard, trying to catch Tex off guard. If he can negate Tex's defense, if he can say, look, I'm going to take shots before you have even a chance to close me down. And that's always going to be an opportunity for them to sail in. Here's Ramos then. Tex maybe just taking his time here, looking to have the last attack of the game. This is something he was talking about yesterday in his interview. Now he's just sort of learned in these situations just to keep possession a little bit more and not give his, his opponent, excuse me, that opportunity to get back in the game now. And it's because he, he's not changing much either. He's had possession this entire game because Jazz has been sitting back. So it's not like he's under any real pressure. Finally, we're seeing okay, a little bit of manual switching from Jazz. And OK, Tex has lost it there. And this is where you've got to be careful in these last few moments. But great manual defending again from Tex. It's always those fullbacks bringing them out of position, not scared to make a challenge. And that should be the end of the game here. Maybe one more opportunity for Tex in the last knock-ins, heel to heel from Ronaldo, can't get past his man, and that is going to be the first leg of our quarterfinals done. It's insane that that does happen, but sometimes, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles. Well, speaking of knockouts, as we say, quarterfinals, every single match today is knockouts. Do or die for these players. And obviously the opportunity to earn a lot of Global Series ranking points with every single win that you put on the board. But if you're just joining us, aggregate score, 3-2 to Tex after that first leg against Jazz. He was behind twice, but he found the winner towards the end of the game. And now it's the Australian from the kickoff. With a nice little McGeady spin to get past his man, but Sergio Ramos gets back to make the tackle. And now Tex brings the ball out of defense with arguably one of the best ball-playing defenders of recent years, Rio Ferdinand. And I think that's what Jazz has to do. He has to find that skill move to beat the first man, but then intertwine it with another skill move to beat the second man, and then potentially the third man, because Tex is very quick at pressuring you. Space here, and Vieira cuts that passing lane off just in time. Well defended there by Jazz, and now he has the opportunity to go forward. And Mbappe now finds Cristiano Ronaldo, steps away from Rio Ferdinand. Pele's going to make that run in behind as well. Pull it now, introduce the attack as well. It's a good move, great shot there. De Gea forced into the save, but fantastic little move there. Great passing play from Jazz. And I think if he does play kind of quick passing play, if he hits it first time, passes, quick ticky tack of football, you do always have the chance of being able to beat Tex from applying that quick pressure that he likes to. Yes, Tex is going to quickly adjust to that as soon as he notices it's happening. But it's about switching things up as the game goes on. Oh, no, and then for Tex down this right-hand side. Just waiting for those two central midfielders to join the attack and maybe orchestrate something for the Englishman Mbappe now. See Jazz just making sure that he's being careful with his player switches here. Doesn't want to get baited in and Van Dijk Makes a good tackle, maybe learn from the goal yep. that he conceded against Tex that that drag back was just around the corner. Yeah, it's a good read of play there from Jazz, and that's what I mean by Tex. He, he does sometimes go for repetition because he wants to try and like double fake his opponent, double bluff his opponent. And I, I imagine that he will try and switch things up in his next attack. Or he could go for the triple bluff, which does happen. I have seen Tex attack the same way three different times and then switch it up the fourth time and then go back to it the fifth time. And that's what makes him so hard to go up against, really. And a lot of players, they are learning from Tex. And that's one thing from being the best player in the world is you are going to be under heavy scrutiny. Players are going to be watching your game. They're going to be analyzing so many eyes it. On you, yeah. They're going to be working out how to beat you at these tournaments. It's not just the people at home that are enjoying it. It's the pros who, are, if they're doing their homework, should be watching and working out what's making him so good as we see an important tackle there coming in from Vieira. Good pressure, though, from Tex. Look, just pushing his players up the pitch, making sure that even though Jazz has won the ball back, he doesn't have the opportunity to take his foot off the gas or have a break in concentration and that's where you can see a lot of goals conceded as well once a player actually wins that ball back they give it away almost immediately having had to concentrate so hard to initially get possession and i think going back to the kind of watching texas gameplay and then learning from him but you also try and spot his weaknesses where is he conceding his goals what is it that's happening 
to allow those spa the spaces to come through. Oh. And that's unfortunate. That's yeah. just, uh, again, when you've tried so hard to defend and you're tapping buttons away, sometimes you'll just press it a little bit too late. A lot of goals that Tex used to concede and sometimes still does is lofted balls over the right and left wings because he brings those fullbacks out of position quite regularly. If you can spot that, if you can bait that out, like he's now doing on the other side to Jazz. Here's R9 then. Finds Neymar inside the box. Obviously he can hit it with either foot, but Patrick Vieira just bullies him off the ball there. Says, that's mine, Sunshine. And now he's coming forward again. Jazz with the ball in behind. Is he offside? Yes, the linesman's flag does go up. But just a little reminder there to Tex. The Jazz is looking to hit him on the counter-attack and he's still looking dangerous when he does so. But it was the offside trap from Tex. He, he, he read it. He knew that that was going to come. He knew that that was going to be the through ball that Jazz was going to try and play because he was doing it in the early stages of the first leg. So that's... Whilst it was a good pass from Jazz, it was great read from Tex to make that uh, just snuffed out in the last stages. Tex then once again controlling this game as far as possession is concerned. Jazz not really too many chances to speak about. And to be fair to Tex, he hasn't really been able to get a shot in anger away. But what a dummy that was from Neymar. Oh, nine hit it on his left foot. Couldn't find the target, however. There's an example of, again, something different from Tex. And he knows he needs to find one of these goals as well, just to try and get this game out of reach from Jazz. Because when it's just one goal difference, we've seen it time and time again of players just clawing one back in the last moments. And then they go on in extra time, so many times to, to win those ties. So that'll be in the back of Texas' mind for sure. Here's Mbappe then coming forward for Jazz. Maybe a chance here for him to find a goal to tie this up. Little run there outside, and what a strike that is from range. That's two absolute bangers from Jazz. And this time it's R9 who steps up. And I like what he did there, you saw the run outside. Maybe Tex is thinking, I'm not going to move my goalkeeper too early just in case that ball is played into that position. And instead of it, he decided to take the shot. And R9 comes up with the goods. We're all tied up at 3-3 three to three on aggregate. Uh, well, it was a good judgment of the game from Jazz. He was watching the play. He was watching Tex just stepping off, stepping off, saying, here's some space, here's some space, go on, hit it. And he was like, all right, I am just going <laughs> to hit it. His name up, though, and he oh, my God. He's going to put him back into the lead. Straight from the restart. Ball into the box. Neymar wins the header. And having worked so hard here, Dan, to get this game tied up, now Jazz finds himself in exactly the same position he was just a few moments ago. And it was just a simple dink as well. Oh, I say simple, actually. It's a phenomenal ball, if you think about it. And Neymar had just beaten the two defenders. Varane, nowhere to be seen. And Tex orchestrated that one perfectly. Goal for the visitors. And what a shame Number that is for ten. Jazz, though, after working Neymar. so hard, as you said, Mark. And now he's going to have to... We go again, again now. We go again. Hashtag, we go again. Vieira's going to be beaten to Neymar. Beaten by Neymar, excuse me, there to that loose ball. And Tex now, just before half time, five minutes to go until the referee's whistle will go. Looking for that two goal cushion against his opponent, Jazz. Jazz has kept this to within one goal for the entirety of this quarter final so far. Pull it now around the corner to Mbappe. Fake shot, strike. De Gea makes the save. It just drops wide. But Tex is just looking more and more dangerous as this game is going on. Ronaldo now with the El Tornado into the box. Oh, overhead kick there. Not sure. I think that might have actually been... Oh, it was Mbappe with the acrobatics, but didn't quite make the contact necessary to trouble the goalkeeper. Yeah, I'm not sure that Tex will mind if he can get a goal like that. It doesn't matter in what fashion whether it's an emphatic one, whether it's a stylish one, or whether it's just one that gets bundled in. He just wants to get this two-goal cushion going into the second half. But you can see now just switching the play, keeping the ball, restricting possession from his opponent, getting the last attack. Here's Mbappe then with this last attack. Neymar, a couple of step-overs. There's the Elastico. Rude Hull is having absolutely none of it. Drops him down and the referee will bring... This half of our second leg to a close. 45 minutes left of regulation time here for Jazz to find a goal to send this one to extra time. But again, it's been a very similar story to what we saw in that first game, Dan. Yeah, and Tex will know that there is always that chance that we could just see another long-range effort here from Jazz. It's something that he's been able to pull out all tournament long. He knows exactly the right power that he needs to apply. He can time it as well. That is a very scary factor. Do you know what else is a scary factor? The fact that we are now 45 minutes away from 
Tex making his ninth semi-final in a row. I mean, if you don't know who Tex is, where have you been? But the fact that this kid really is creating a dynasty in FIFA, I mean, he's probably setting himself up to be one of the best, best FIFA players ever, let alone just one of the best FIFA players in FIFA 19. Well, to do that, he has to get through this game first. He's going about it the right way at the moment. Neymar now coming forward for Tex. Marcelo on this left-hand side. Going to get the ball back here. Mbappe, it's actually Neymar, sorry, on this left-hand side here. Goes past one, finds the ball into CR7. Jazz got to be careful here inside the box with his tackles and does do well to defend that. It's so difficult to defend against Tex as soon as he gets inside that 18-yard box. Now he's got to do it again. Neymar changes direction after that. Croquetta can't find the pass here and Jazz is defending well. The defense is not going to win him this game. Here, Danny has to find a goal. Yeah, Tex is going to keep pressuring, but I wonder whether when we get to the later stages into the last 15, the last 10, is Tex going to start just playing the ball around the pitch? Is he going to start to just hold on to this one goal lead? And if he makes one mistake whilst doing that, that might be enough to just slip up and give Jazz a chance. Tex doesn't often make mistakes, but everyone is human. They can happen. Tex again just controlling the ball in this midfield, looking for spaces in behind. Might be a chance to strike it first time. He does take that chance. Mbappe sends it over again. I'd love to see maybe a heat map of some of these strikes from Tex because they, they have, he has been peppering Jazz's goal, but still just the one goal between the two players and one chance here for Jazz. We've seen how dangerous he is when he gets into those positions. He's going to tie this up. Here is Mbappe, tries to get around Marcelo. Manages to keep possession. Neymar now around the corner to Pelé. Body's in the way though for Tex and now he comes on the counter. And whilst Tex has been peppering him, whilst he has been shooting from like kind of long distances, I think that demonstrates how well Jazz has been defending. Because it's not like Tex to constantly be shooting from outside the area. Usually he's going to be trying to use skill moves to get himself into that box, to try and beat the man, to try and just simply pass the ball into the back of the net. But he hasn't been able to do that as well as usual. So we have to give a little bit of credit here to Jazz and how well he's approached this defensive style of his game. Yeah, I'd have to agree. He really has stifled a lot of Texas attacking prowess, which is something we very, very rarely say. However, as I say, he's not going to win this game if he doesn't manage to find a goal. So for all of the defensive work that he's doing that we're giving him plaudits for, it's at the other end that he needs to produce the goods. Inside the last 25 minutes then. Can the Australian find a goal here to give himself a chance of really creating a historic moment here for his region and Something to certainly remember here in Singapore. And I have to Time say, for changes now, mean, the Australians, they've turned up at this event. They have really impressed me. And I think they should have, they've impressed the whole world with how they've approached a lot of these games where they have been taking, I mean, going up against the best player in the world and Jazz only just looks second best. He is really bringing it to him. I'm very impressed. And like, it's just going to be maybe one more chance that he needs. And then suddenly it's all tied up. Suddenly we're going to extra time. And that's a great thing for him. Here's Hullet then for Jazz. Well, it's going to hit it as well. Has had some success from range there, but maybe with that space in front of him, would have liked him to maybe just try and commit another defender there before looking for a pass for a maybe slightly higher percentage opportunity. But it's been working from hitting him from there. That's the thing. He's been able to kind of get past Texas high line of defense by just saying, all right, well, if you are just going to step off a little bit, I'm going to hit those shots. And all he needs is one of them just to sail into the back of the net and then suddenly it's all all back to square one once again. Tex is, uh, he's also struggling going forward. You can see he's having to recycle the ball so much and it's going to be one of those mistakes that might allow Jazz one more chance. Here's Hullet then, there is a ball through the middle there for CR7, he didn't spot it. Would have been a great ball and Ferdinand, his favourite centre-back, steps in there to win the ball. Now look at the space here for Neymar. Tex with a chance to finish this one off. Waits for the goalkeeper movement. But goes the wrong side and Jazz stays alive. Oh, Big chance there for Tex. Yeah, he knows. He knows that was it. He could have killed off the game. He could have bought his ticket into the semi-finals. Still has a corner though. Still has possession. Just trying to get away from all these white shirts and it's offside in the end. So Jazz still living. Only one goal behind. And that's going to make a very nervy last, what, 11 minutes left in this second leg.
of this quarterfinal. With every single second that ticks past, Tex gets closer and closer to getting that ninth consecutive semi-final appearance. Jazz has got to create something here. Ferdinand again steps out. This time it's Sergio Ramos who makes the interception. Nine minutes left on the clock here. And you have to wonder if Tex can keep the ball, how many opportunities that Jazz is going to have, but he gets it back here with Marcelo. Yeah, it's not like Tex to just kind of keep the ball. He will be looking for that goal. He'll be trying to put the game to bed, but he's got to be careful when he's doing so. Tex, though, still very quick to step out with those defenders. He is just instantly sprinting at white shirts when he noticed the ball's coming towards him. And Jazz has won it back here, and it's Ramos down the right-hand side. Gets the ball inside, so looking for the player, but Vieira... Stepped in there to make the interception here for Tex. And look at the pressure now coming in from Jazz. He needs to get possession back. He's won it back twice in the last few moments, but he hasn't been able to make use of it. And that could just leave him open at the back. Corner then for Tex. Takes this one short. Decides to go back to Ramos here just to eat some more seconds off the clock. Mbappe now. Again, time management here, game management from Tex. Does need to be careful though, Mark. One little mistake could give Jazz that chance. And there there's that is. mistake, and Jazz knows this could potentially be his last attack in the game. And look at the players flowing forward here for Jazz, but he just dawdles on the ball for slightly too long, gives the ball back. And was that the chance that Jazz might regret? Tex now coming forward. Maybe looking to put this one to bed. Maybe looking to just keep the ball. Ronaldo around the outside. There's the Elastico, heel to heel. Marcelo gets the ball back, but I don't think he's gonna have time to go forward. And there's the screen from Tex. He makes another semi-final, nine consecutive. Can anyone stop this man?